Mishnah says, in the end of Yuma, the finishing thought of a Masechta devoted to the laws of Yom Kippur. Omer Rabbi Akiva, Asherechem Yisrael, fortunate are you, the Jewish people, Lifnei mi atem metarim, umi metarir eschem, before whom you cleanse yourself on Yom Kippur, umi metarir eschem, and who cleanses you on Yom Kippur? Avichem shebashamayim, your Father in heaven, Shenemar, I will throw pure water on you and make you clean. Hashem is like a mikveh. So the Mishnah tells us two things about Yom Kippur. Before whom you cleanse yourselves, you purify yourselves. And who is it who cleanses you? And we give two psukim. One is that Hashem throws waters which purify us, and the other that Hashem is like a mikveh. These are two distinct ideas of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur has two functions. First of all, Yom Kippur is a day when we're supposed to do tshuva. If ne Hashem titoru, Rabbi Yoni says, the mitzvah sasei. We're supposed to do tshuva on Yom Kippur. You're supposed to clean yourself from any Avera that you have. You're supposed to be in the Kabul, not to return to any Avera. And you're supposed to be misvade on your Averas. We spend most of our day on Kippur in Vidui and in Tefillah and asking Hashem to forgive us and to do tshuva and that we should do tshuva. There's another function of Yom Kippur. And that is if somebody already did tshuva, there are certain Averas which are insufficient to cleanse a person from his sin. He still has to undergo suffering in order to be totally clean of that sin. So there, these Averas, they're like Averas, the Gemara says, Averas that you're Chayev, Malkis, Averas that you're Chayev, Mise, Bezen, or Chorus, these Averas, it's not sufficient that you do Tshuva, but you have to undergo, you have to pass through a Yom Kippur, then you keep her cleanses you. Now in that sense, we don't have to do tshuva on Yom Kippur. We just have to pass through Yom Kippur, and Yom Kippur then is like a mikveh, a mikveh which cleanses us. So the two functions of Yom Kippur. Number one, it's a day when we do tshuva. Number two, it's a day where we already did tshuva, but we still need Yom Kippur to complete the kapora, to complete the forgiveness complete to remove the stain of the sin from us so that we shouldn't have to suffer. And that passing through Yom Kippur itself is that mikveh which removes the stain from Manishomas. These two functions of Yom Kippur are really, we say, every, every davening of Yom Kippur also. We say, Forgive our sins, Erase our Averas from before your eyes. In other words, first we give our sins because we do tshuva. Secondly, we've already done tshuva, but we still need to have the sin removed from before your eyes. First of all, you cleanse us with tshuva. Secondly, you cleanse us because you are a mikveh, a mikveh that purifies us completely and removes any stain of sin. Two functions of Yom Kippur. Now, the first function of Yom Kippur, as I said, is very forthright. In order to merit forgiveness on Yom Kippur, for those mitzvahs that we have to do tshuva, we have to do tshuva. Tshuva is charote, regret, kabbalah lahabo, acceptance upon the future, not to return to the chet, and vidui, and vocalizing this kabbalah and this charote, in speaking to HaKadosh Baruch and asking him to forgive us. But what about the second, the second function of Yom Kippur, that it's a mikveh? Does that function require anything? Yes. Like a mikveh. A mikveh, if you have a chatzitzeh, the mikveh doesn't work. You have to remove chatzitzes. If you move the chatzitzah, the mikveh of Yom Kippur works. What is the chatzitzah that puzzles 
the mikveh of Yom Kippur. Well, first of all, we can't do melachas on Yom Kippur. If we, if, if we violate Yom Kippur by doing melachas, the same melachas as we also do on Shabbos, Yom Kippur is not mechaper. Secondly, we have to fast on Yom Kippur. Uh, we can't, we have to remove ourselves from being physical beings. We can't eat, we can't drink, uh, we can't bathe, we can't have marital relations. Uh, we, we have to become spiritual beings on Yom Kippur for that mikveh to take effect on us. But there is one more element of Yom Kippur that creates a chatzitze without which Yom Kippur cannot have its effect upon us. And that is expressed in, in the piyut that we say on Yom Kippur day after the Avoida. We describe Yom Kippur in the following way. Yom she'en boi achile ushtia. Yom she'en boi sicho. Yom she'en boi rechitza. Yom she'en boi tashu shamito. We talk about all the physical acts that we have to abstain from on Yom Kippur. That's a description of the day of Yom Kippur. There's one more description of the day of Yom Kippur. That is, Yom she'en boi kino v'tachavus a day in which there is no jealousy and competition between people. This is a description of Yom Kippur. In order for Yom Kippur to take its effect, we must remove jealousy and arguments and strife and competition from one person to another. That is the final chatzitze, which prevents us from achieving the cleansing effect of the mikveh of Yom Kippur. Right, that's why the Shulchan Aruch says, You're supposed to ask your friend for forgiveness on Erev Yom Kippur. There's always an obligation to ask your friend for forgiveness if you hurt him. To do tshuva, you have to ask forgiveness from the person you hurt. But there's a special deal on Erev Yom Kippur. You must do it before Yom Kippur. You can't just wait till after Yom Kippur. You can't just undertake to do it and do it after Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, you must do it. It says in the Shulchan Aruch, before Yom Kippur. Why? Because without having peace between friends, without with strife, argumentation, and jealousy between friends, the mikveh of Yom Kippur does not have its effect upon us. It's a chatzitze. And therefore, we have to have yoim she'en boi, Kina v'tachos. Right. So that is the way to to achieve the cleansing effect of Yom Kippur. Spiritual beings, without eating, without drinking, without anything physical, and without jealousy and argumentation between people. Why is that so? Why is that an important component of the mikveh of Yom Kippur? Because to attach yourself to the mikveh of Yom Kippur, you have to attach yourself to Hashem. You have to say, I want to become close to Hashem. And there's a conflict between coming close to Hashem and worrying about your honor and money and prestige, all these things which cause argument between people. Therefore, in order to achieve the closest to Hashem, which is the mikveh of Hashem on Yom Kippur, we have to let go of kino v'tachos. We say in davening in the morning in Mizmah Lasoida, "Du ke Hashem hu alekim hu asonu v'lo yanachnu amoy v'tzei marisoi." It says "lo yanachnu" and "lo" is written with an aleph. But it's pronounced with a vov. In other words, saying, Hu Hashem, Hu Asonu, Hashem made us, Veloyanachnu, Amma Vitzamarisa. The way it's written is, Leonachnu, we did not make ourselves. And the way we read it is, Leonachnu, we belong to Hashem. There are two ways of looking at life. One way is, we made ourselves. Uh, we are in charge of our destiny, we're in charge of our future. We can determine our fate. We, we, it's we who are important. Right? And anyone who gets in our way, 
has to be pushed aside. That's the one way of looking at the world. For that we say, we didn't make ourselves. But then the reading of the Pesach is, we belong to Hashem. To the extent that we recognize that Loyanachnu with an Aleph, that we didn't make ourselves, that we're not in charge of our lives, to that extent, or do we belong to Hashem? There's always a, a conflict of interests between ourselves and Hashem. Should we serve to worship ourselves, or should we serve to worship Hashem? So on Yom Kippur, when we are trying to come close to Hashem, to be able to be cleansed by the mikveh of Hashem. The way to come close to Hashem is to forgo, the, to think, we, we didn't make ourselves. We're not the most important people on earth. Everyone is just as important as we are. The world was created for me, but it was also created for him. The world was created for both of us. And therefore, we can't have jealousy and competition. We're all in the same boat. We're all striving towards one thing, which is coming closer to Hashem. We're all part of the Jewish people. We'll have to work together. And therefore, that is, forgetting that idea is a chatzitze, is something which separates us from the waters of the mikveh. It separates us from the closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's a chatzitze in the mikveh. So, re, to recapitulate, there are two ideas in Yom Kippur. First of all, Yom Kippur is a day where we have to do tshuva, we have to cleanse ourselves from all our averas. We have to say vidui and rid ourselves of any avera that we have. But Yom Kippur is also a day of closeness to Hashem, where Hashem is a mikveh, the mikveh which rids us of any stains that we may have, even though we did tshuva in the past. Stains that might cause us suffering and pain. Yom Kippur cleanses us of that. But in order to reach that mikveh of Yom Kippur, we need to remove any chatzitzes within ourselves. The chatzitzes are not working, doing labors on, on Yom Kippur like Shabbos, and not eating and drinking and so forth. But the ultimate chatzitzes is being selfish, being self-centered. This is something we have to arrive at before Yom Kippur and during Yom Kippur, removing the chatzitze between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and making sure there is no mikveh, there is no chatzitze in the mikveh which is there to cleanse us and elevate us spiritually. I wish everyone aksir v'achasim etoiva, may we all be zeichet to a true kapore on Yom Kippur, when mikveh Yisrael Hashem, ashreichem Yisrael, ifne miyatem etarim, umimitayar esrem.